and good afternoon once again. And thank you once again for attending Moton Live 2021. How wonderful to have heard from two distinguished authors just now, Deborah Douglas and Margot Shetterly. We are blessed with their presence and with their artistry uh, as expressed in, in their writings and thank them very much for joining us. It is my pleasure, uh, once again, as my last act as host today, although Moton Live 2021 continues, to announce and to introduce to you the fourth and final panel discussion for today. It's entitled, Moton's Impact in the Community and Beyond. Moton's mission is as relevant today and as needed today as it ever was before. Every day, adults and youth are confronted with challenges and issues both in their own lives and in the communities in which they live. They must be able to relate historical content to their lives. Museums and historic landmarks have the ability to help individuals engage with history on a deeper level. Join this discussion as we talk about the impact of Moden's work and how the museum can continue to have an impact on those around us. Our panel, concludes behind me, Kanan Townsend, Director of Education and Outreach here at the Moton Museum, Cameron Patterson, Executive Director of the Moton Museum, Leah Brown, Assistant Director of Education, Moton Museum, Sherry Atkins, Guest Services Coordinator, Moton Museum, and Justin Reed, Director of Community Programs, Virginia Humanities. Ladies and gentlemen, your panel on the future. All right, well, first I wanna thank the Moat Museum for inviting me back home. Uh, you know, I, I spent some very, I guess, formidable years here as, as an employee. And I'm grateful to be able to come back to my former place of employment. Not everybody, <laughs> <laughs> not everybody's always welcome <laughs> to come back to, to their former place of employment. And so thank you all for, for having me and, and allowing me to, to be a part of this, this panel. I think. You know, for those who are watching right now, maybe they're surprised, maybe they aren't, but you know, Moton is a museum that is led by young people. I think, you know, we're all millennials here, you know, at the table. Um, you know, the museum field is, is, is something you don't typically see people retire. You know, they, <laughs> they may start as an intern and then they retire as executive director and they just, you know, decades later. Um, but I think we have something that's, that's very special here. And in fact, that you know, this is a museum that is, is you know, being operated you know, by people who are close to this history, um, to, by people who, who can connect to the next generation because you do serve as that bridge, I think, um, between you know, the, the, the stories that you're telling and, and the students who you want to receive it. You know, this feels a little bit like a, a TV reunion, I think. Yeah. So I'm going to try to keep it casual. It's like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, you know. There you go. Uh, um, but I, I am interested in hearing how, you know, the museum has changed you know, for, for, for each of you, I guess, from the time you started and you know, to now. And I'm, I'm trying to think what's the best order to go in. I mean, Cherie, you... You're the most senior person. <laughs> you've seen you've seen a lot. Yeah, um, yeah. But I'm, maybe we'll start with Leah and let okay. you. We'll go we'll go from from the most recent to the most senior. That way, you know, you won't end up covering everything. You know, they can they can, they can build up. <laughs> Thank you. Smart. Yeah. So Leah, how long how long have you been in Moton? And what are some of the things you've seen change? So I've been in Moton since October of 2019. It was super exciting. Like okay, let's go with the Young Visitors Project, which it's focused on K through eight grades. Like, all right, well, how can we con connect with these students? How can we get in contact with them? How can we make connections with teachers? And then I remember vividly going to VAM 2020 and we're like, oh, this pandemic thing, what's that about? What's VAM, what's VAM for those So who Virginia might know. Museum, the Virginia Associ Association of Museums Conference. So lots of museum people in one place. It was, I had a great time. I love conference. And then I was like, oh, this pandemic thing, what's that? Oh, it's something? Great. So trying to figure out what's next, because we're slowly building air. Well, luckily, we're, we are connected with Longwood. So I see a lot of college students. Mm -hmm. 
the front in the fall, which is great for me. All right, let me perfect my tour and then gate engage with students that way. But getting ready for spring, fourth grade, junior studies are gonna come. Oh no, they're not because there's a pandemic. So how can we connect with them that way? So being able to switch to virtual, part of my background. So it wasn't that difficult for me, but also from scratch, how to build and put things together that are going to be accessible, easily engaged, easy for the students to engage with, and then what teachers actually need. So trying to bridge the gap that way. And then uh, it's just been interesting because it was kind of like I'm brand new. Because you, you started right before the right pan- before. Or a few months before the pandemic. Yes, hit. in October. So okay. it was like, okay, we're here. Right. It's all so changing. Were, Let's go. You were preparing for the spring. You were yes. at that fall. Spring is usually when you see the uptick mm-hmm. in, in student visitors, K-12 student visitors mm-hmm. in the pandemic hit. So it's kind of like this is how we typically do it. Scratch that. This is what we're going to do. So I have learned to adapt through the years with different positions. So this was great to be able to pull out, think about things we've done, I've used before, and then to apply it to Moten's content. So it's been, it's a weird, it's it's exciting, but also, whew, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. I think so I'm y'all are pretty next. close, but I think yeah, you're so five, six months. So January of 2017 is when I came on board here at Moten. And um, I think what I have observed that I've enjoyed, you know, I was thinking about it the other day, you know, as we look at, you know, our Moton Council, which is our community engagement board, really exciting that over the last couple of months, we've worked to really diversify the voices that are a part of that council group uh, and really work to bring on some younger voices that as we think about how we want to engage and diversify the audiences uh, that we serve, it's really important to have people at the table um, who have those insights that can help us to make uh, that outreach. Uh, So I've really appreciated that embrace. And then I think the last year too, you know, just the creativity and the flexibility that everyone has had in the way that they go about the job. So the embrace of virtual. I mean, that we, you really had to shift completely what you were doing. You know, we always felt like, all right, virtual is going to be important to what we do, but the pandemic just kind of forced you to go at it a bit quicker than we might have normally. Um, and so I think there's a lot of creativity um, and excitement that comes from having to rethink what you do um, I think the ability to do something like this uh, was really birthed out of that space of, you know, we're sitting around the office uh, as the pandemic is moving forward, uh, really just kind of plotting out what's going to be next. And it was just really neat to kind of see how we throw something on the chalkboard in the office. And then, you know, a couple of months later, we've built it out, conceptualized it, and have now implemented it. So, you know, I just appreciate being in that environment where it's okay to embrace that. And and those are the original chalkboards from 1939 when this building was constructed. So instead of putting up uh, banquet seating (laughs) on the chalkboard, (laughs) like in years past, uh, now we had all of our Moten Live plans up there. Listen, I want to say something about the banquet because this (laughs) <laughs> is this, is the, this is, it took place last year? Yeah. Right before yeah. the yeah. pandemic. Yeah. 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 You know, I was reflecting, I was like, maybe I think the banquet might have been the reason why I had to leave. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't plan another banquet. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I mean, I mean, and it's, a, it's an incredible event every year. Yeah. Um, but you know, you're, you're seeing 500, 600, mm-hmm. 700 people sometimes come out, you know, for this, for this community-wide banquet. I mean, it's always incredible event but i remember you know helping with a, a banquet in charlottesville a couple of years ago and um, they asked me to be a part of the host committee and they said uh, it was going to be 400 people i was like oh that's not all y'all only, <laughs> okay. y'all only having 400 people <laughs> i mean i think that's you know i i miss it I, I miss the fact that we can't have the banquet this year of course um, but i'm also glad that you all don't have to put on a banquet this year either. yeah <laughs> you know, I, think, yeah. I, think, I, I think the banquet will be back 
in some way yeah. at some time, but uh, we, we might have to think about how to do it yeah. a bit different to ensure its safety. Definitely. And Kanan. Yeah, it puts me up next. August 2016 <laughs> was when I started. Um, and that's been, I mean, it's been a, it's truly been a whirlwind. I mean, I think that's probably the easiest way to describe it in the best possible way. So, you know, certainly there's been recognition of this history prior to me coming to, to the museum over the past few years and, um, you know, watching the Post articles and, and TV interviews and, and, and documentaries and such. But I don't know, it just seems like five years in August for me, like over the past five, every year or every six months, there's something significant. Like, mm-hmm. like super not that other stuff hasn't been significant, but like something like really like whoa, people recognize this, right? Like the Attorney General building being changed to Barbara Dodd's name, which is incredibly ironic, just given how many of those Attorney Generals were arguing against yeah. Barbara Johnson and those students in the courts. That's 2017, February 2017. Mm-hmm. Yep, spot on. And like the safe paper, their, their safe paper is now named in honor of somebody they fought so you know vehemently opposed to. Like, and you know, the SOL is being updated to include Barbara Johns at every level now, like elementary, middle, and high. Um, or, you know, the, the state holiday, like, it's just been, and, and not that, you know, she's the only one being recognized, but like, just people acknowledging this history, just for me, and, and, and I knew, you know, this is a big deal, but I grew up here, so it's a lot different than somebody, and now we're getting requests from Iowa, and, and North Dakota, and all over the country, like, and all over the world, even, we've interacted with people, I mean, even before I was here, too, but like, this is amazing, just to see people, not that we need the validation, but like, people are recognizing, yeah, this is, this is big. Right. Mm-hmm. This is really significant to the national arc of American history, and it deserves to be to be talked about. Um, I think that's been the, the, the really big thing for me. It seems like every every six months or so, there's something that comes to remind me of that. Like people know where the people are acknowledging that. And now that you know Barbara John's statue is going to go up in, in D.C. You know Barbara John's and George Washington. I mean, who would have thought that those mm-hmm. two statues that represent Virginia? Right. Certainly not me. I'm pleased though, very very pleased. Um, but about what that re- represents of these students and then the collective action. And I, and I said it this morning too, but I drove up to the building this morning, you know, sun was still rising, I can't see an indication what time I got here, but um, I got chills, like, and I haven't had those type of chills since, I mean, probably since when I first started working here. Just something was different, right? Just like the weight of the day was, was on me. Not no mm-hmm. lot, but like the 70th anniversary. Seven, it's like yeah. right. seven decades have passed since in the very spot that I'm in. He's about that and stop. Um, the very spot that we're standing in and sitting in now, like, sat almost 500 kids out where we're looking, right, who were going to make a decision that they didn't know what was going to happen after that, but would later go on to you know, change history. Like, that's just, yeah, I mean, myself chills and stop. But um, uh, the weight of this day is certainly upon me. And this, you know, we'll continue to stand as, as, as a monument to the, these students and their sacrifice and their collective action and their willingness to stand up in the face of tyranny and oppression. Um, and I just, yeah, I love working here for all those people. And I, I'm glad you kind of reminded us of where we're sitting right now. Mm-hmm. I think maybe some people might not be familiar with the, the space. And I think, you know, for someone who, who is familiar with Moden, I think I sometimes take it for granted, right? Mm-hmm. This, you know, just being able to stand like in this spot, you know, where we know Barbara Johns and the strike committee right. stood, I mean, on this exact day. And I just got chills thinking about it as I described, I mean, you start to describe it slowly yeah. and then you connect that story with the place. You know, I think it shows just how important, how special you know, this building, this, this historic landmark really is. I, uh, just in the way that, you know, folks that were here earlier today, when they meet Joan Johns Cobbs, they meet Joy Cabrera Speaks, they're in awe. They want to ask all of these questions. And it's like, I get to see them every day. Mm-hmm. Right? I get to call them on the phone, you know, talk about random things. And, you know, it, it's just amazing to recognize that you've got that privilege to be able to do that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Shereen, so 2020? 2019. 2019, mm-hmm. 2017, 2016, 20, 2012. 2012. Yeah, okay. started in 2012. So in June, it'll be nine years. Okay, so yeah, coming up on a decade. Yeah. yeah. So what's, what's changed? You, I know you've seen a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I saw some of it with you. And, and, you know, so much. You know, so much. You can share some of it. You yeah, know, I don't know all the so details. So. But um, yeah, transition upon transition is yeah. how I would explain mm-hmm. it. Um, 
I would say the major transition that really touched me was seeing the gallery space come to life, seeing the exhibits mm -hmm. be implemented in, see the classrooms totally transform. When I first came on board, it was just empty classrooms with banners explaining what would be in each space. So when we give tours, we would have to kind of use our imagination and allow the visitors to kind of visualize what it would be and how it would look. Mm -hmm. So it kind of, I treasure that time because it, it forced me to learn the history in a way that it was never taught to me, in a way that I didn't mm -hmm. know, in a way that I hadn't heard, you know? So it forced me to dig deep and learn more about what took place in this in this sacred space. So just seeing the exhibits come to life and being able to share that with the guests that come every day to just to tell us things like this is on the level of the Smithsonian, you know, mm -hmm. just giving us those type of compliments, just really, really, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think what's changed for me between when I started and coming here. I think I started about a year before you. I definitely think that the national recognition is, is something that you know, has, has, has come more so in recent years. Uh, and I think this deeper understanding of Brown not mm -hmm. simply being a Kansas story, right? You know, something that is truly national with five communities you know, producing plaintiffs. And I know there are efforts underway that they have Moton declared uh, an affiliate yeah. site. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was pretty powerful. Uh, there was a natural resources committee meeting um, in the U.S. House a couple of days ago, and to sit and listen to James Clyburn, who is, you know, the third in House leadership, talk about how Prince Edward County in the school closings has impacted him even more significantly than the case in his own backyard. Mm -hmm. It's just pretty powerful to see how this history, this story, connects with so many people um, in such a powerful way. Right. And, we, and we know that legislation is working its way through Congress right now, and it, it would name Moton an affiliate site of the, the National Brown v. Board, well, the Brown v. Board National Park, mm -hmm. uh, one, of, one of five sites connected to the National Park System, which would be an incredible mm -hmm. you know, uh, partnership. I won't, I, won't, I won't share too many more stories. <laughs> what, else, what else do I want to say? I mean, I think, I think you know, seeing this, this staff evolve is something um, that, that has been a, a, big, a big change, too. And, and the fact that, you know, the education team is being built out. I mean, there's, there's a lot that, that has happened in the staffing sense, too, that I think is really important. Um, obviously, there's a lot going on right now in the country when it comes to you know racism and you know fighting for justice i'd, I'd be really curious to hear kind of what you see molten's role in all of all of that everything that's swirling me from, from last march maybe until now um, even what are, what are the important lessons that you think you know the young people who are demanding change right now can take from this story i think uh for me, you, so Kanan and I had the opportunity last summer to um, have a series of weekly conversations with students from Longwood University, really as we worked to help them kind of process uh, what was happening. Uh, the whole goal was to give them space to uh, really share their thoughts and really begin to think about the types of things they would want to do as they return back to campus. Um, and I think in those conversations, we really began to see the importance of really helping them to understand and utilize the historical lessons that a place like Moton offers. Uh, so all of these students are very committed to wanting to advocate for change within their campus environment, within their community environment, and, you know, Moton offers lessons as to how they could go about that, what it means to, you know, advocate, to organize, to kind of build this uh, idea of, um, you know, being collaborative with those around you. Um, and so that was really neat for me to kind of watch uh, as they kind of went through that process. Um, and it really just kind of shows that you know, Moton is a learning lab that can help do that for all students. Um, 
And, and, you know, I think that's an important role that we have to play or should play. People love a statement, right? Like, I, I, I'm just not, I'm not one to think that statements are all that important. I mean, I think the, <laughs> well, I think they are important in the right context, but I think, you know, you saw the, the BLM Black Lives Matter banners on social media pages. You saw the blackout photos. And where are they at now, right? Like, I think it's far more important to practice what you preach um, and actually speak far louder than words. So I think we'd like to speak through our program. Uh, I think we like to speak through the events that, that are held here. I mean, we continue to have protests here. We continue to have town halls here talking about uh, policing and community policing and such. Um, we continue to, you know, any student who wants, you know, student or community member or, or whatever wants to have an event like that, like we are that space. Like we are the bridge and the connector between the, the these opinions and the, can be the anchor for these conversations. And, and that's what we continue to do. I mean, the amount of people want like, oh, Moten, your civil rights museum, what do you have to say about the killing George Floyd? I'm like, what do you think? Like, obviously yeah. it shouldn't be happening. Like, what, what, like we don't, it should, it's obvious, right? So like, how can we go about making sure stuff like that doesn't happen again? And I think that, what I appreciate is that we, a lot of that we just do through our, our program, we do through our actions, we do through, you know, the events and the people we let use the space for certain purposes. It's not through, it's not performative. And that's, and I think I can't express that enough that that, like, yeah, you can say this. You can right. it's, not, it's not. So, it's not just something that pops up. Exactly. That, you know, for 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 you all as a staff here, but it's something you're thinking about every day. Yeah. So you're programming. Yeah, yeah. It's we a, live it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's not just something that. Sorry, talk about the fucking not just sirens. Um, okay. <laughs> it's not just something we can. We want the privilege of like opting in and out of the conversation. Right. Exactly. We're often right. Constantly thinking. And that goes with our mission as well. Like we educate about the civil rights movement and civil rights and education. We also, we're a constitutional democracy. What does that mean? How does that play into it? And with students, Barbara Johns was 16. We've done to 16 year olds. And with social media, you have access to everything constantly. What do you see in your community? What do you want to change? How can you get that conversation going? Who can you collab with? So it's kind of like empowering students. Not like you do have a voice. You have a say. And you, this this is your country too. You live here. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think I think equipping them with the tools, right? Mm -hmm. That that so often get get left out. I think when we watch films about the civil rights movement or we see documentaries of pictures. I mean, it seems like people. The way it's presented is that people are just waking up one day and deciding. To, to march mm -hmm. and then the next day everything gets better <laughs> <laughs> like that i mean you know that's 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 the myth unfortunately that mm -hmm. i think you know, too many too many you know u.s americans grow up with when they think about this history yeah. i think moton complicates that story a little bit more you actually see the strategy right mm -hmm. that's what i think about the, you know yeah i don't i don't ever want you to walk out of gallery six and think that it's all right. like it just magically got better as schools reopen i mean you know the second half of, to that story would tell you that students continued to fight mm -hmm. and protest and advocate even in this county um, and a lot of the things that they were fighting for are things that people are still pushing and advocating for even today i got a question for you as we're talking about this so <laughs> you talk mission Yes. So I think you were on staff when that portion was added to Moton's mission about <laughs> just kind of <laughs> advancing dialogue. And so I, I'm just curious to know, like, what was your thought about oh, now, why that was important? I feel a little bit in the hot seat now. I, I, I remember that. I remember that meeting. Um, you know, Moton had a, had a mission in place and we decided that we wanted to just edit it a little bit, mm -hmm. I think. Um, and, and now I feel bad. I can't. I can't spit out the mission. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not employed here, but I expect you know, yeah. preserve they, they and promote it. the history as it relates to. Yeah, they say yeah. you're supposed to be able to. You know, you got to know your mission, your organization. Yeah. But um, you know, I, I think initially the the mission included language around a positive interpretation. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, and the word positive, I remember, wasn't sitting right with many of us at, at that moment mm -hmm. um, because not everything that happened in this history is, is positive. Right. Um, and I think even a lot of people who you know want 
the student strike and Barbara Johns to be kind of this feel good Hollywood narrative of, you know, mm -hmm. triumph, you know, triumphing over evil, or, you know, whatever Hollywood narrative spin they want to put on the story. And the people want, want happy endings and it doesn't always occur. And so I think, I think we change positive to maybe constructive. Is it constructive? Yep. No. Yep. That sounds right. So, that, I mean, and that was a very intentional choice mm -hmm. to, to essentially say that, you know, the history and what's being taught may not always be positive, but it, it will be constructive. Mm -hmm. it, it will it will be taught in a way to you know hopefully you know, improve society. Um, you know, to take out the, the difficult the difficult lessons and apply it in some way that could help create um, a better uh, present. Um, and then the, the the second part remind me again is the is the constitutional constitutional uh, democracy. I mean, power, what, power, power in the constitution. There you go. Democracy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I think, you know, in that, dialogue in there somewhere. that part I think, connects back to, um, you know, really what, what you were saying earlier, Cameron, I think the story that the galleries and the museum tells mm -hmm. is a 13 year mm -hmm. battle campaign, you know, kind of using every tool <laughs> available yeah, yeah. to affect necessary change, you know, in, in this country. And so, you know, again, it's, it's easy to think that a, a march is, is what will change things, but it's the march and the litigation, right. you know, you know, and, you know, the legislation. And I think, you know, we need to be aware and conscious, right, of all, of all the tools that we have in order to, in, in order to bring about the change we hope to see. And so I, I'm pretty sure those are the main changes. Again, I'm probably I'm going to go back and read the mission and then I'll, I'll, I'll send you emails. Like, and, then, and then this was the reason for that too. But, um, you know, I, I think a, a lot of it was trying to connect it, connect it back to, to young people. And mm -hmm. when they come here, you know, what are the things yeah. we want them to do? I think that's important. I mean, it, even that change just kind of gives you a present day mm -hmm. focus, um, which right. is important. Right. Right. Yeah, I'll never forget. I was speaking to some fourth, it was fourth or eighth grade. I don't remember why I can't remember, but um, either way, the question was equally as insightful. It was in 2017, I want to say. Um, I just got done giving a presentation, and one of the students asked, you know, do you think that Barbara Johns and those students were like the students at Parkland High School in mm -hmm. Florida? That's right after the shooting. Um, and I said, well, well, yes, they do. I said, yes, I do. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm not here to discuss the debate. You know, policy changes because that's not the role in which I'm here to serve. However, I will say that those students felt that their lives were in danger. Same the students here in Moton felt their lives were in danger. They can't ride around these rickety old buses while I'm breaking down all over the place. And it so happened that this time they broke down on the train tracks. They felt that their life and their education was at risk. And so this was going to be something about it. So I do see similarities. So I say that to say these students are making, you know, they're, they're making the connections. They're, they're drawing comparisons to what's happening in the real world. And I think that. Would be selling them short to not for us to not do the same and make those connections with parallels to the current society. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. So I mean, we're talking a little bit about what's, what we hope students will learn when they come here. Mm -hmm. You know, I really like to hear kind of what you've learned in your time here. Um, I mean, I guess that could be from, from from a historical standpoint, or it could be a personal standpoint, or what have you learned? I mean, I think when I think about what I've learned. Since I've been at Moton, or while I was at Moton, has has really been some of the kind of the family stories, and kind of placing people in this larger historical context, and you never really thought about their connection to this history, um, and and having that greater awareness of, of what they experience. And I think how they uh, persevere. I was just amazed coming to Moton how much this history was around me even growing up in Lynchburg, mm -hmm. Virginia. So in Lynchburg, you know, I was, I worked with Everett Berryman's wife, Doris. Uh, Everett and Doris are two of our storytellers mm -hmm. um, and, you know, supportive volunteers of the museum. You know, I so I worked with her, like I, I grew up, like, you know, being around her, you know, very close with, um, their daughter, um, Edwina. And so I didn't know their story fully until I met Everett sitting in a class, history class at Longwood University uh, that he was a part of. Um, you know, I didn't realize that 
I had a few folks that went to church with um, my grandmother who were connected to this history as part of the school closings, uh, that lockout generation. So it's just amazing how much that story was around me and I didn't fully know it um, until I started working here, until I started being here in the community. Definitely the diaspora, you know, for a lot of different reasons, you know, connected to this. Definitely. Thank you to this history. Sheree, I'm curious in yeah, almost was, a decade. Man, so much. Um, I'm going to cheat a little bit because it's a recent, you know, experience that kind of like hit me and just like really made me kind of collectively think about my time here at Moton. And something you said earlier about just like when you're constantly in a space, you kind of take it for granted, you know, but you know, the recent magazine that was released, my mom's story is in there. Oh, wow. So that, I don't know, it just, it, it hit different because to sit there and hear her tell stories, you know, and share with me about her experience and things of that nature is one thing. But then to just see it in print <laughs> and just to know that future generations are going to be able to know yeah. my mom's experience, mm -hmm. like her grandchildren, her great grandchildren, yeah. like people that don't even know her are going to get to know like the experience that she had. And even when I read the story, it was some things in there that she didn't even tell me it, it, that I just learned from reading the story even today. <laughs> and your, your mother was was part of that, that second generation of students mm -hmm. who was affected by the school closing. Yeah. Did, yeah. did she talk to you about that history in growing up? Funny enough, no, not until I started working here. Mm. And I started again in 2012. I would say in 2014, she started to open up mm. because mm -hmm. even even the, the events that preceded the school closing, I educated her on that because she had she didn't know. Like she didn't know what preceded, she didn't know about the student strike. She didn't know about right. the massive resistance. All she knew was that she was a little girl that couldn't go to school, rode the school bus at the age of 11 for the first time, didn't understand like why these things were happening to her. Right, right. that larger context, the national yeah. context. Of the exactly. History. So, so just like educating her in that regard, like gave her a sense of relief, like, oh, like I literally heard her say, it wasn't my fault. Mm. So wow. how many other students wow. or people felt like it was their fault or was something they did, mm. you know, to, to keep them from being able to have an education, something that's mm. freely awarded to American citizens or, citizens or should be, you know? So just like that experience was just like, wow. Yeah. I think I, re I remember, you know, I think it was, it was Mickey Carrington, you know, who years ago mm. said, you know, the power of, of, of Moton in this place and the ability to help the community heal. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, I, and I don't see that as being a, a cliche. I think, you know, when, you, when you're able to have that deeper understanding of, of something that's happened mm -hmm. um, and you can get, connect those dots and kind of place yourself within that, that larger history, I think there is a, there is a healing that comes mm -hmm. from, from knowing and understanding um, what, what occurred, you know, especially if you're that young. Yeah. So we've kind of seen it through each iteration of the magazine, more and more individuals that feel comfortable to come forward and tell their, their story. Um, what was it like for you guys when you see this permanent exhibit that has opened to the public? What was it like as folks started to come in and engage with it? How did how would you ask another stuff? Wow. Did I mean, you see that healing begin to take place? A gamut of emotions. Healing, uh, anger, mm -hmm. you know, joy. Um, it was a lot. And even just like the whole like the technical aspect of it as well, just like building the system to be able to track these visitors to come in and then the people that come in and share their stories and be like, okay, man, I wish it was a way we could archive this. Mm -hmm. Because you would just have random people to come in and say, mm -hmm. hey, I was a police officer during the time when, you know, MLK came to Farmville and I escorted him, you know, to this place or that place. It's like, how can we archive these stories? You know, mm -hmm. just hearing these random stories in addition to like having them to give them the opportunity to experience the exhibits, like just kind of like gambling all that was, mm -hmm. it was a lot. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to think back to that time when we, when we reopened. Some of it is a blur. Some of it I might have 
intentionally forgot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think, I think seeing, I don't know, maybe maybe pride, maybe pride is the wrong word. Um, I don't, I don't know. If, I mean, I think there there are parts of this history that people should definitely be proud of. I think you know, mm-hmm. when it comes to you know the way the community organized and, and was able to resist and, and you know, persevere through so much. Um, and then there's so much about this history that I think is still very painful. Um, but I think something something that I remember being really impacted by was when we had local community members who lived through this history come and not, not necessarily feel a sense of pride, but I think a, a, a sense of of recognition, maybe, mm-hmm. you know, you know. A, and having having a place that acknowledges what they experience mm-hmm. and the importance yeah. of it, and all, and maybe pride isn't the right word, but I think it's just it's the, the, the recognition right now. of of you know what they went through is important because I think you know for so long, you know, can you remember it's like your mom, you know, like your dad? I mean, I don't think anybody had ever stopped to really kind of appreciate the sacrifice, right. yeah. you know. You know, and, and what they went through, and and how you know those years of education that they lost, you know, led to the Griffin decision that prevented it from happening all across the country. I mean, this 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 is a place where I think people can come and maybe feel honored and and, and know that you know, they, they their sacrifice mattered right. and it made a difference in some way. Yeah, I thought it was pretty powerful uh, to hear Skip Griffin mm-hmm. stand on this stage when we dedicated the wall of names and he said you know your you know to the individuals experienced the lockout you know he said your sacrifice was a down payment Mm -hmm. so that our children and grandchildren could have an education Um, so i think you know it was important to frame it in the sense that as much as we commemorate the strike generation like to the folks of the locked out generation, your sacrifice was equally right. important. Right. And I wasn't gonna jump in, but now I am. Um, <laughs> because I, and, and y'all are speaking to something I think about often and we're, 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 we're back and we're in good state. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think I really started to notice this when we had that 65th commemoration of the Bradbury Board decision, just this narrative shift from like, you know, you just read your mother, you know, was this my fault, right? To mm-hmm. like, to like almost like it had to happen here in Prince Edward County, right? Because we were the only people who could have survived it. Essentially, like it's, it's and pride probably is not the word, but it's just like, yeah, I, I, I survived this. I survived mass resistance. I survived Prince Edward County school closings. My sacrifice was important. It was valued, and it led to the to the greater good. And I think that going back to the your question, you know, what I've learned, I think grace. Um, mm-hmm. if, if I didn't know grace before I came here, I certainly know it now. Mm-hmm. Um, these. But people are some of the most graceful. They can forgive TJ Michael Wayne. They can forgive mm. Barry Wall. I'm just like, I just cannot think of any like thing stronger, sort of like you know, a former enslaved person forgiving their enslaver, right? Like I just, I, I just don't think I'm that. I, just, I, just, I admire that so much in them. Um, a lot of that is based around their faith, which I also admire. Mm-hmm. But like they can for they for a lot of them, and a lot of them have. So don't you know? It's not universal, but. You know, Joan saying that she forgives the people who did like make or the cause of her sister having to move like be moved away. Like I'm just like I, oh, I just if I could have one quarter of the strength that your heart has, then I would be uh, all, you know, all all the better. But it's just incredible to me just to see how, how graceful, in spite of all this traumatic history that's happened, that so many of these folks have had in space, and it's just the most one of those admirable things that I can even even think of. Oof, I don't think we have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as, you start, as you start reflecting, I mean, yeah, and, yeah. and you know, kind of the, the heroes walk among among us, you know, type mm-hmm. of you know re- reality, and that is very true. Right. You know, being in Prince Edward County, being in Farmville, you know, the, the heroes who, who survived this history, who mm-hmm. push forward this change. I mean, they they walk among us every single day, and you know, for most of their life. We never recognize for their heroism you know, during this 13 year battle. And I think, you know, as Moten is a museum and, and it is also a monument to them and their sacrifice. Right. Um, 
and those who, who, who experienced and pushed through those 13 years. Mm -hmm. You know, how are we on time? I have not been keeping track of time. About six minutes, but if we go over a little bit, that's okay. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. well, <laughs> it went quick. Well, and, you know, it did. It did. And, and you know, yeah. I, it's good to be able to talk to, with you all. I think I want to do this more. But mm -hmm. what do you, what do you what do you see as as what what are the things that are necessary for Moten to 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 get to the next level in your mind mm -hmm. or whatever that may be? You know, what are the things that you would like to see happen or you feel are needed? Um, and Recognizing that Moten has done in 20 years what you know a lot. I mean, this and Moten is a very young museum, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Thank you. Know? you. So it's a pretty it's neat done, thing. Done a lot. <laughs> you know, I get we get a lot of calls from individuals that want to do in their community what Moten has been able to do. I, I think everybody recognizes that in their own communities they've got a story to tell. Um, and so it is neat to talk to them about the way in which Moten has developed over the past 20 years and how we've gone about that. And, you know, I think as I look to the future, you know, I'm always one that thinks about the human and physical infrastructure needs um, that will help us to expand this, the reach of this story even further. So, you know, continuing to build out the team uh, that really allows us to have that statewide approach to even think about, you know, what does Moten as part of a national conversation look like? Um, continuing to develop this site, um, think about ways in which we can elevate the permanent exhibit that we have here. Um, I think those things will be key to how Moten moves forward. We need a feature film. Yeah. Um, that's been my draw my opinion. I think that everybody at the state level knows about Moton, you know, politicians, you know, Polit politicians. That's a whole nother panel. Yeah. Politicians. Yeah. <laughs> you, that's yeah, whole, yeah, that's a, that's been a big change in the last you see a lot yeah. of politicians who will mention Farmville and Prince Edward in their yeah. speeches now. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think everybody people know about Moton in Virginia. I certainly want it to be more national, but I think in order to, to break the floodgates, we need yeah. a future film, like the Hidden Figures Treatment. Right. Um, and, and, and the story is so rich, like you won't need to embellish anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like it's, it's a the lot. story writes itself. It's there. We need somebody to come in and do it. I, I agree with you. I think that I mean, that's something, right? Having having a feature film that's done the right way by the right person yes. you know, yeah. Sorry, would be critical in, in helping you know, you know further nationalize and nationalize yeah. this history. I see a challenge being what parts of the story do you right. tell? Mm -hmm. uh, because in, within this 13 year history, you have probably five, six, seven different films, really. Yep. I mean, if you really start to break it down so um, yeah. by, you know, you know what occurred here, because so much, and I think also that's probably one of the challenges, maybe because it isn't this really clean linear story. Mm -hmm. It can be as long as Roots. Yeah, <laughs> Roots, <a> Roots series. <laughs> Harry Potter, give us nine movies. Oh, Let's go yeah. Yeah. Nine movies oh my gosh. We so, need to connect with Ava DuVernay. There you go. Ava. Ava. Go <laughs> on the which camera? <laughs> <laughs> Ava. Please. Yes. Oprah with the seed money. There you go. Ava with the the direction. Yeah. Tyler might rent out his facility mm -hmm. for yeah. free. Never know. Never know. Never know. So we speak into existence. You know, build, building out you know, the site and the, and the staffing capacity and the infrastructure, you know, um, you know, being able to, to, to tell the story, story through through film at the national level, international mm -hmm. level, too. What do you think? It, what would you like to see? Or what do you think is needed? I think I think we're on a good track with the virtual piece mm -hmm. because we can reach people that we haven't been able to reach in times past. Mm -hmm. Like Kane was saying earlier, people from Iowa. I mean all over the U.S. and abroad, you know, we're able to kind of access them. So I think if we continue to build out the virtual aspect that can really, like, put us on the, on the, on the fast track to, like, reaching mm -hmm. the world. You know, and going off of that, you know, as an educator, I want to equip teachers to tell the story as it is, not how we want it to be, mm. and then for them to feel comfortable to say, this is uncomfortable, get ready, we're doing it. Can you repeat that one more time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is 
say that's that one more a, time. Say that one more preach, time. Preach a, there you go. A moment right there. Be comfortable being uncomfortable because if it's not uncomfortable, it's not history. It's not. Like I know the U.S. It's and messy. You know, and you said teach it. What that that line? You said teach it. How, how it's supposed to be. How it's supposed to be. Yeah. How it was versus how you the were. envision of this is great. Like no, it wasn't. It was awful. And which perspectives are you telling that made it great? Who are you purposefully ignoring? Right. But then to like teachers, it's okay. We'll, we'll do this together. We're in this, we're educators doing this together. Yeah. And then for teach for students, we're a resource. Come to us if you have questions. I love the email. I love answering questions because you're thinking about things that maybe you haven't thought about before, you haven't considered, or you don't know where to start research. Because we have sources, mm -hmm. we can get something going. Right. So just we are an asset, we are a resource. And we're here to serve you because part of museum work is customer service. Mm -hmm. You know, I was I was thinking you know, about today and the fact that I guess it's been probably within the last five or six years when you know, Prince Edward and Moton has really entered the, the state standards mm -hmm. of learning, right? So we've yet to see the effects of, of that. You know, these students are still coming through K-12. Maybe they're entering college. But when I think back about my fourth grade education, mm -hmm. And how much Jamestown, Williamsburg, yeah, we received, and how mm -hmm. that's you know, as a Virginian, that becomes part of your DNA. Mm -hmm. We're we're kind of on the cuffs, really, of of, mm -hmm. of you know, what those changes will, will mean for the story and students all mm -hmm. across the state. Knowing it, but there are some powerful examples of teachers that yeah. are doing it well. I mean, we celebrated this morning the students of Laurel Ridge Elementary and Fairfax County Public Schools um, and their teacher, Mara Kinney. And, um, you know, these students in an after school program um, were working through history standards as part of this uh, history change makers club. And so, you know, they used the creation of this Barbara Johns historical marker as a way to study Prince Edward history in its totality. And um, I think, you know, we see our role as wanting to help replicate that in every corner of the state. I mean, I think there are some parts of the state that just have access to resources mm -hmm. to do it mm -hmm. well. And, you know, there's some other parts of the state where I really think institutions like Milton play an important role. Like I look at Region 8, like we're one of the only museum institutions in this region of the state, you know, with the, there's a responsibility uh, that comes from that, you know, Moton can help in a pretty powerful way. And, and, I, and I know today too, I mean, we're, we're commemorating this history, but it's also an opportunity for people to contribute to that work in, the, in this mission. I don't want anybody to ever think that because Moton is affiliated with Longwood, right. that we don't still need people <laughs> right. to, you know, donate and support, mm -hmm. um, you know, even even the, the wealthiest private institutions in this country, you know, can't sustain everything they do without having people donate and support. And I think, you know, it's, it's important for people to, to recognize that it, it's critical. You know, I think Moton has been successful because of, you know, the collective action, you know, both mm -hmm. <laughs> from 1951 till today, you know, of, of making yeah. this museum possible. And I, I think, you know, if, if anything, I think hearing some of what you all are envisioning, I, I mean, I really hope that will inspire people to continue to, to support yeah. and support more. I would say, you know, every engagement experience that we are able to have with students on site, virtually in schools, comes from the support that we raise Absolutely. from individuals. You know, Longwood support's invaluable, but it's more operational. But just the ability to do the programming to do the educational outreach um, requires us to still seek that support um, from individuals. It's not. It's not enough to have this building open. Yes. Right. You know, we need right. talented. We need talented staff. Yeah. Uh, probably double the size of staff. I mean, let's imagine long. You know, long, long term. Long term. Mm -hmm. And at least, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to do the work that a Monticello is doing. Right. You know the work that uh, um, you know. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna listen to all the plantation <laughs> museums in Virginia. Well, I was getting ready to tell. Like, I'm, I'm really not gonna go down and listen. Name every single big plantation museum in the state. Well, you know, I think uh, 
I don't ever want like Moton is a place where I think we can be on the level of yes those okay. institutions mm-hmm. um, in terms of the work we do, in terms of the significance of it. Um, you know, I I think uh, we thought big when we built this thing. When the community built this thing, they saved that thing. I think we just got to continue to con- to think big, dream big. All right, so imagine 30 years from now when we're sitting here, probably, <laughs> probably <laughs> hopefully, Lord Whatever. willing, yes. is 100. Yeah. Oh, it'll be the 100. Yeah. It'll be the <laughs> centennial. Think about that, right? It'll be the centennial anniversary of the Golden Strike. <laughs> you know, we'll all be kind of young. Wow. Probably like 60-ish year old people. <laughs> that is quick for me. Wow. Yeah. That's a, yeah. And they'll still be working now. And 30 years <laughs> now. And I think about it because I think, and I, I'm getting chills too thinking about that because also, I mean, you know, you know, we'll be some somewhat of the elders at right. that point, perhaps, mm-hmm. right? Wow. What, what would you, what would you want to see? Like, just try to maybe, you know, we could take a second and just try to imagine, you know, when when we come back. For the 100th anniversary of the student strike. All right, stop saying it, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Because you know, we're going to do the compare and contrast. Because you have to stop and reflect and see the change over time. And then we don't know what students are going to do the next 30 years. It's like, all right, babies, go, go. And it's, it, it's awesome what could happen. I'm still, I'm still hopeful enough. It's awesome what could happen. National Park Service affiliation. Yeah, I mean, I mm-hmm. UNESCO World Heritage, World Heritage. Yeah. Yeah. status, yeah. which is we know is so we would, a campaign for that. So that Park Service affiliation would still be thriving. Mm-hmm. UNESCO would be a done deal. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I, you know, I, I just want, you know, I want this to be a place where people come and they study and they learn about this history you know, a place where folks come to research this history. Uh, you know, I want us to be a place that is actively contributing to, you know, curriculum conversations across the state, across the country. Um, you know, it'd be nice if we could, you know, find ways to take what Virginia has done in terms of its curriculum uh, development, you know, with the work of the Commission on African American um, history, education. history, education, and replicate that. Uh, some southern states that could benefit from that. Mm-hmm. What, do you, what do you think it should? should That's the loaded question. I, wow. <laughs> I mean, Thirty years from now. All right, I'll say something, but then I'm gonna come back to you. Yeah, I'm thinking, <laughs> you know, and Cameron and talked about kind of expanding the kind of the physical plant. You know, I think there should be multiple structures in Farmville dedicated to this history. Mm. You know, a you know a visitor center that's independent of this site, and you're bringing people here, perhaps, right? Mm-hmm. You, know, you have a, a space. You mentioned the research center. You know, you mentioned um, you know you know being able to expand the education program. You know, having a a, a larger education. I mean a national type of education center. I hope uh, I hope Mary E. Branch is vibrant mm. and joins us as a active contributor yeah. to telling this community story. Um, and Mary Branch is, is the, the high school or the school that preceded Moton that is right across the street that you know we're still looking for resources to to you know, rehabilitate. I want when people mention like black museums slash cultural institutions, the mock is first and open second. Mm-hmm. I because I, 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 I think the story is that big. I think it's that important. I think it's that influential. I think it can be that. Um, but that comes with the business center and the getting to other sites and renovated this stuff. And I think we can get there. I want when you're doing research on the civil rights movement on these court cases on the you know, NAACP. Here is one of the first three places that you that you name. Like you have to come here if you want to have an effective doctoral thesis mm-hmm. written on any aspect of the civil rights movement. Like I want that to be perfect years, man. Like that, and I, and I think that's doable. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I'm thinking temporary exhibition space too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because there's so many stories. Yeah. So many ways to look at the stories. Right. And, and speaking of the stories, I think I, if the story could just be stewarded well. Yeah. And one way to do that is to ensure that the direct lineal descendants of the strikers and the mm -hmm. lockout students are fully educated and informed of yeah. what their parents, grandparents endured and be able to like tell that story, you know, right. because it's, it's personal to them versus right. someone mm -hmm. just coming and doing research about the right. story, which is fine, but someone who is actually connected to it, being able to relay that story and, and emote it with emotion and just having that like personal, yeah. you know, feeling that's, with it. That's a, yeah. so important. I mean, that's the next big challenge for Moten, you know, as, individuals of the strike generation and the lockout generation continue to age mm -hmm. how do we engage that next generation mm -hmm. right uh, in this community uh particularly um, right and recognize that you know not not everyone is is into history right you know, some right. people you know, you know don't don't feel that they're, they're a history person you know quote unquote mm -hmm. But this is isn't simply history, right? I mean, this is this is this is this is you. Yeah. yeah. Like this is this is your family. Mm -hmm. And I think you know, connecting, strengthening the connections with that that growing descendant community, mm -hmm. I think is going to be really really important. So no one isn't a job. Like it's like being paid to be part of a family. Yes. Really yes. Really yes. Strange. Yeah. Strange. I've never yes. worked anywhere else like it. I probably never will work anywhere else like it. But it's like. Like I don't like Moten will be in, like Moten will be in my will. Like you know, it's just this weird. Like it's just it's weird. It's a, the best kind of weird. Like it's mm -hmm. you're being paid to be included in a in, in part of a family, and I, I think there's no higher kind of praise on a job than because then it is a, a, a position. But like I don't know, it's just it's hard to put into words. But it's just like it's a spirit. Like I think when Nadine Marsh Carter uh, at the 2017 banquet, 2018 banquet, one of the other, but she said, you know, spirit of Moten. I'm like yes. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the phrase and the words that I can use it because it because it's a spirit. It's like you can feel it, right? Like people, are like, oh, you're really good at this one. Well, like you know, I've been you know, really big shoes to fill, and like <laughs> I, you know, I'm in this space. Like I, it just mm -hmm. it just kind of takes over, right? And it's just it's just that passion that just kind of comes. Well, and even if it in your family by birth, like it mm -hmm. quickly becomes like mm -hmm. if you truly immerse yourself mm -hmm. and take the time to build the relationships and build mm -hmm. the trust with those that you work alongside, you know, it, it becomes that family. Um, you know, I feel, I hope my mom's not watching. And this is not for you, mom, but I feel closer to a lot of these people than even some members of my own family. Like, you know, Reverend Samuel Williams is like mm -hmm. a grandfather yes. type mm -hmm. of figure, like Bob and Diane Hamlin yes. are like grandparents. Yes. Um, so it, it, it grabs you. Yeah, it's, you know, being the the newest person here, it's like, okay, hi, welcome. Oh, you do want to hang out with me? Okay, great. Oh, you it's and Mickey awesome. Carrington are like, yes. that's we brunch. Brunch. Yes. You brunch. <laughs> <laughs> Regular brunches. Well, you know, and that takes me back to uh, something that a, a visitor said, and you know, Sheree is really the one primarily responsible for this visitor saying this, but it stuck with, it stuck with me. Um, a woman came here and she said that, that Moton was the warmest wow. museum she has ever visited before in her life. Well, that's a compliment. Yeah. yeah. And I think, I mean, and I think that speaks to some of what you all are describing, like, you know, despite everything that has happened in this community, mm -hmm. you know, and all that, you know, and I'll say a collective we, even though I wasn't alive then, but all that we've had to come through, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I think who said early about that grace, right? I think it was yeah. Grace Kane, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the, the love and the warmth that we still continue to show you know, this, despite all of that. Right? Yeah. You know, I think it's something that is extraordinary. And I think that's also a lesson, right? Yeah. In some way. Yeah. Yep. We have to wrap it up. <laughs> I want to thank you. Yeah, <laughs> thank, you know, thank you for tuning in, everybody. Yes. Uh, please continue to, to support um, this incredible staff that we have here. And thank you all for, for stewarding thank you. You know, mm -hmm. such an important place you know, 
Thank you for being here. Yeah, you know, thank you for your job. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Everything up and well, leaving you with big shoes to fill. We already, we already had our combo a year ago, so y'all can watch. You can watch <laughs> me and Kay made a conversation uh, from March, April 2020. Yeah, so mm -hmm. Well, and that's the neat thing is, you know, I feel like you have like gone on to be able to help expand this story mm -hmm. yeah. in a broader way from 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 where you are now, just kind of having that statewide mm -hmm. view. Well, you an ambassador, got right. yeah. yeah. Well, you've got your right lifetime away. volunteer card, right? So like, that's <laughs> the as soon as as soon as the pandemic is over, I'm, I'm ready to you know get some weekend tours. Thank you. Know, I'm ready to go to somebody's family reunion. <laughs> I yeah, I missed all of them. Yeah. Mm. Are you still filming us? Is still, we're still live. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you guys.